I'd rather. Uh, I like to talk with my hands a lot. So. I, and I can grab it. Um, for those that don't know me, I think probably most of you do, but Craig Norlander, I've been keeping bees since about 2003. Um, been definitely involved as far as the Beekeeping Association, the New Mexico Beekeeping Association, ABQ Beeks uh, for a while. Um, thoroughly enjoy teaching, talking about bees. I work full time with the New Mexico National Guard. It's killing me right now. I please, please, I apologize. Please forgive me if you called and asked me about a queen. Um, I've probably got about 12 messages on my phone that I have even had a chance to listen to. So uh, I, again, I apologize. I don't have any queens. If you're asking, so I'm waiting for that response. I don't. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that tonight as as we're going and getting getting things ready um, for the winter time and stuff. I definitely want to share my experiences. If you have any questions, by all means, uh, ask, um, and we'll, we'll keep going. Um, you know, I'll answer them as best as I can. Uh, so far, so good. Everyone can hear me? Fine? Okay. Great. Um, this is a really, actually, crucial time as far as beekeeping goes. This is how, you know, you're preparing the bees for the winter time and spring. And this, what you do right now is critical to what and how the bees will do through the winter and how well they do next spring. I think as um, beekeepers, especially, you know, I know, you know, for me, when I first started keeping bees, I got really excited my first honey crop and tasting my honey and everything else. And I had a tendency to pull probably a little too much honey out of the hives than what the bees, and so I had bees starved to death, uh, which is not a good thing. Here in New Mexico, and I, I found this to be true, typically the books say the southwestern states needs, needs about 30 to 40 pounds. Uh, I live out in the East Mountains. I find that I need about 60 pounds, which is a five gallon bucket, in order for them to make it through the winter. Um, that's that's a lot of honey. That's typically in a top or a, a Langstroth hive like this that I have. That's about 10 to 12 frames of honey left in there. So you, they need that much honey in order to survive the winter and get through the, the times of winter. Um, there's there's definitely some things that uh, are detrimental to the bees as far as winter survival. One is a, enough food. Two is moisture. Um, I've had people say, you know, what can I do to help protect the bees from the winter as far as helping winterize them and insulate them and everything else? Um, I've had people kill their bees because they've wrapped them in plastic. And even though they had airflow and the bees could get in and out, you know, they didn't suffocate. What happened is bees perspire during the winter time. They produce a lot of heat. If you have a really good, strong hive, it's amazing. Bees are, you know, the more you find out about them, the more amazing they are. You know, the queen will continue laying throughout the winter. She'll slow down if it's a really strong colony. They'll slow down and start up again about, you know, January, February time frame. Um, in fact, you know, I had a friend, I was telling somebody here tonight, had a friend call me up. I had some bees not far from his house. He called me up uh, right after Christmas, first part of the year, and said, Craig, you'll never guess who's in my, you know, who, who's visiting my property. And I said, yeah, you're right. I'll never guess. Tell me, <laughs> tell me who's visiting your property. He goes, you're bees. And I go, what do you mean? Is this, you know, it's winter time. They should be visiting your property and stuff right now. He goes, we're putting out cracked corn. Uh, for the wild birds to feed in the winter time, and he goes, it's really fun to watch it. The bees go in there, and they're moving the cracked corn kernels out and gathering the dust in the bottom of the pan, putting it as pollen substitute, and taking it back to the hives. And I said, well, that's good news for me and bad news for me. Good news is means that I've got some hives that definitely have some brood, and they're trying to do some pollen substitute. 
in there. And that's how we come up, that's how people came up with pollen substitute, you know, in Langstroth states. They noticed that the bees were going to the flower mills and gathering in the spring, gathering flower dust as, as they're milling the grains and stuff. And they said, what are the bees doing with this? This is kind of weird. And they started checking it out, finding out they're using it as pollen substitute. And then we decided, you know, hey, we can use it as a pollen substitute, and do soy flour or whatever. And then, and then as the scientists started investigating more, realizing that you know, it needs some protein, it needs some amino acids, and got, it's gotten better than just flour. You know, and by all means, the cornmeal, the corn dust that they were grabbing, wasn't very nutritional, wasn't very beneficial for them. It got them through in a pinch. But it told me also that I needed to go feed them. I needed to go put some pollen patties in there to feed them. Um, I shouldn't have had to do that. That's one of the things as you're going through your hives, and right now is a really critical time to go through your hives. You're going through your hives, you want to make sure, uh, there's, there's four things really you want to make sure of. Um, you want to make sure that you have a good population of bees in there. Um, you want to make sure that there's no diseases and stuff to take care of, you know, that you have to worry about. Um, more than likely, if there's some kind of disease, you're going to lose that hive in the, in the wintertime, for sure. They're just not going to be strong enough. You want to make sure that there's enough honey in there. So, it depends on also the size of the hive. Um, for this, for two stories, um, on the Langstroth hive, again, 10 frames, and what I'll do is I'll have two frames on the outside of each box, and then one or two frames staggered in between in the center of these boxes. I like to try to have, and you want to manipulate your, your bees, they should be starting to reduce the brood pattern a little bit right now. As it starts getting colder, the bees are realizing this, it's getting colder, they're going to start, the queen's going to start reducing the egg production, the laying. And so you want to kind of reduce that and consolidate there more. And it's better if you put the honey on top as far as the Langstroth hive. Uh, on the top bar hive, TJ would probably be more uh, better speaker on this than I would. I, I haven't dealt a lot with top bar hives. I've definitely helped out. But again, bees are bees. You need the honey. You need that honey for them to survive. And um, for what, what would you say, TJ? You want probably about five or six, at least five or six frames of honey in there. So the rule in Central New Mexico is five. Uh, I'm sorry, twelve bars will get you through the winter. Twelve bars will combine brood and honey, and any honey past the twelfth bar technically is the beekeeper's honey. However, I always leave fourteen. The brood near the front. Honey to the rear of the brood. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say. And out of those 14, probably about half of that is honey, is it not? You'd like to think that, right? Yes. Pollen and honey mixed at the top, brood at the bottom. Yep. Yeah. And so that's, well, and, that, and that's a key point. So if you have frames that have, as TJ was saying, uh, pollen, brood, and honey mixture on there, you know, that can count as, as part of your honey. And stuff. The other thing that you do want to see is pollen in there. For that very reason that I was telling you about as far as the corn substitute. In the winter time, as that queen starts laying, um, and, or continues laying, uh, they're going to need pollen to feed that brood. There's no pollen around. They need to have that stored. So you should be looking and making sure that your frames, your comb has some pollen in there as well. It's crucial to have that. If they don't, you need to start doing some substitutes. If they don't have that much honey in there, you need to start feeding them right now. And you start feeding them right now, a one-to-one -one ratio. It's starting to get colder. You want it so that you don't have that humidity in the hive. Albuquerque, you might still get away with the one, uh, four parts water, one part sugar right now for a couple more weeks. But as it gets colder, you want to reduce that moisture content because that adds the moisture in the hive. That's one of the things, that, one of the amazing things, I went and grabbed some, uh, uh, tried this as an experiment um, one year, and it actually worked pretty good. It was pretty, pretty convenient for me to do, um, as far as, you know, I've wrapped them in black tar paper before, 
when you have 40 hives, that's not very feasible. Like one or two hives, when I had that, 10 hives, it was all right. 10 hives were starting to get a little bit harder to do. And if they're strong, I haven't worried about it. And they've done fine as long as the hives are strong, they have the honey in there. Um, and your boxes are sealed, you know, as far as tightness and stuff around it. You don't have any cracks. Duct tape, you know, seal the cracks if you have some cracks and stuff on there. Help them make it. Typically also here shortly, you don't want to open them up anymore. Here in about two weeks, you don't want to start break. You, you want to go through your hives, check everything, consolidate the brood, make sure everything's together. Reduce them down into the bottom, put the honey on top if you can, leave, some, leave a box of honey on top, um, or off to the side, consolidate it, again make sure that everything's consolidated, um, and then let them be, because as you break that, on either one, you're breaking that propolis, you're breaking that seal, you're going to allow the wind to get through there a little bit more, and stuff, which is going to cause them to be chilled. I started saying, uh, one of the things I did as an experiment um, is I grabbed the you know, blue paper towels and you can buy it you know, auto zones or you know, places like that, auto shops or any auto section in any store, um, and threw it on top. I just you know, lifted this up, threw it on top, set it down, and left it for the winter. It amazed me the next spring when I went in there to start going through my hives, the mold that had gone onto that blue paper towel because it absorbed the moisture that the, the bees were creating in the winter time. That's one of the things that kills the bees. If they don't have that, it wasn't you know that person that wrapped it in plastic, it was the moisture because the bees will uh, produce the moisture as they, uh, to breathe as they exercise and keep the hive warm. They'll produce that moisture. It'll come up onto the top of the hive and drip down onto the bees. The bees will get hypothermia, they'll get cold, they'll get chilled, and they can't get warm. Okay? So it's really crucial that you have some kind of, um, and, and the bees do this pretty well on their own, but some kind of ventilation, typically a normal hive will have the ventilation that it needs without covering them with plastic or anything else like that. Um, some people, and I've done it in the past, has drilled a hole in the top. In fact, Langstroth, when he first started uh, Langstroth hives, he, he absolutely said so it was critical to have a hole in the top. I know the design that uh, TJ has for top bars has a ventilation in the back. It's crucial to have that, to let that moisture be able to escape. So, the hive... Are you saying that that's a good thing to put that towel in between that thick? It, it actually worked out very well. It's the whole toilet. It's no, no, I just take one sheet off. Sorry. Oh, one sheet, just one sheet, <laughs> one, not one the sheet. whole thing. Yeah, not, not the whole thing. Just one sheet, and throw it on top, and uh, let it sit there. Over the hole. Over the hole. Yep, absolutely. So if it's over the hole, it's not interfering with ventilation? Mm -hmm. okay. No, because the ventilation air will still go through that. Okay, I did it last year, and it worked. I, I did it last <coughs> Uh -huh. You suggested last year, yeah. but I was worried about ventilation. Do yeah. you drill the hole in the top super? So I stopped doing that just because of the fact as I was moving bees around and boxes around, um, it got to be a little challenge to find out that <coughs> I had missed a hole as I'm starting to move bees and the bees were coming in and out of a place that I didn't realize <laughs> was there still. Um, so the other thing, if you do that, do the hole, uh, which, you know, again, ventilation is a good thing. Uh, if you do the hole, make sure I did it the first time, and again, you learn as you go. I did a 3 8 inch hole. Um, it was amazing to me that the bees actually seemed to prefer that than the front entrance. And they started going in and out of that as well. But because it was only a 3 8 of an inch hole, I had, I guess, a fatter bee that would go in there and got stuck <laughs> and died and then they couldn't get back and forth in there anymore. Um, that top hole is also very beneficial as far as, uh, so you want to make it at least half an inch, you know, half an inch to three quarters of an inch. It, the bees will use that as an entrance and exit as well as the ventilation. 
If it's too much ventilation, they'll start propolizing it. They'll cover it up. Uh, you know, I've seen it on, in, on a lot of holes and stuff where they're propolizing completely. Um, you know, they'll, they'll control their masters of the ventilation of what they need to do inside the hive and stuff. But we want to try to help them out as much as possible. As an alternative, could you crack or the top a little bit in the back? Absolutely. So some of, the, rock there? some of the inner covers that I have, uh -huh. and that's where I've stopped putting the hole in. Uh, this one doesn't happen to have it, but some of the inner covers actually have a notch mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. and so you notch that out, and that creates that hole, that ventilation, as well as a place for the bees to go in and out. That's not a bad idea when um, the bees, you know, if you have length strength versus top bar, most of the top bars that I know of are always sitting on a sawhorse there. That's one of the advantages of the top bars. I don't, you don't have to be bending down here to, to work them. You're standing up straight to work them. You know, if you have a top bar that's down on the ground, you're defeating one of the advantages of the top bar. So, um, but with the Langstroth hive, you have to worry about snow covering that front end, entrance and stuff, uh, completely covering it. If you have that hole in the back, you have an option for the bees to go in and out, or a hole up here. So, so I don't have covers like that, I just have a straight lid. Um, should I crack it in the back? As opposed to, like in the summer, I crack it in the front. Yeah. Um, you can, I'd be hesitant with that because you don't want moisture getting down in there. Um, it's a good question. I, I, I don't, you know, if you propped it up too much, if you prop it up, you're going to have too much of a, a, a ventilation problem. You're going to have too much air hot air escaping from that. So you have what's called a, 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 a migratory lid versus a telescopic lid. Nothing wrong with that. Um, more than likely, that telescope or the migratory lid is going to have enough ventilation that you're not going to have to worry about it. So, but I shouldn't, I shouldn't put that crack in the front. No, you definitely don't want to have a crack. You don't want all the heat coming out of it. The, the bees will, you know, when there's brood around there, they'll keep that brood. It can be 40 degrees below zero. This is one of the amazing thing about bees. 40 degrees below zero, and it'll be 95 around that brood. Mm -hmm. Just completely amazing. Uh, if you ever have the chance, you know, to pop it open, just kind of take a look at it. You know, sometime in the winter time, put your hand over this hole if you have that, or if you have a migratory lid, put it around the top and you feel, you feel the heat. It's amazing the heat that's coming off of that hive. So, I understand with the top bar hives, I haven't seen this too much with the length stress, but with the top bar hives, I understand that you can tell where the cluster of the bees are at when it snows because it'll melt. Mm -hmm. Right there. So, depending on if you, know, you have some insulation stuff in between. So if I have the kind that has the notch in the top, uh -huh. would it be advisable to drill the hole too? No, I would. If you have the notch in the top, just leave it like that. And have everything equally aligned. Have everything equally aligned. One of the things, and that's a good point, one of the things, and that's just any time in the year, before I walk out of the yard, I'll sit there and look at my hive and go, oh, wait a second, my top's off a little bit. You know, fix it, make the top on. Oh, this box is a little cockeyed. Let me straighten it out. I do that anytime before I leave the yard. I'll sit there and do just kind of a quick look and gather and stuff. So um, the fourth thing I told you, there was uh, four things. I've only told you three. The fourth thing is you absolutely want to make sure that there's brood going into the winter. It's crucial because those are the bees that are going to be your winter bees. Those are the bees that are going to survive the winter and be helping raise that new population of bees that they're producing in the late, um, late winter, early spring. You need those bees to do that. I've had that mistake where um, I had, in fact, you know, when I first started keeping bees, um, probably my second year of beekeeping, you know, I heard you needed to replace the queen every <coughs> two years. So I ended up killing all my queens. They built beautiful queen cells, as they were supposed to, out of the brood that was in there. The queens came out, 
It was about this time starting to get cold. The bees, about that time, went and killed all the drones. I had all these beautiful queens that I could find that didn't have any drones to breed with. I didn't have the brood going into the winter because those bees couldn't lay. And, and someone asked me tonight, you know, the queens couldn't lay other than drones and that didn't do them any good. Uh, and I lost all those hives by the time the winter was over with. It's absolutely crucial. Uh, I've seen it where the bees have, uh, some of the bees that I've brought in, one of their traits as far as the mite resistance, I was told, you know, might, they're fairly mite resistance. One of the mite resistant traits is they absolutely stop laying if there's no nectar flow going on. I've had that same thing happen to me. Good queens, very viable queens and stuff, but they stopped laying because the nectar flow had stopped. And it was a little too soon before that to happen. And again, no brood going into the winter. I ended up losing those hives. I had to feed them. So if they're not having some kind of egg laying pattern and, and root going in, feed them so that they start. And you want right now feeding them a four to one. That helps stimulate a nectar flow, stimulates the queen into laying. So you want to do that so that she will continue laying. She's going to slow down, but you don't want her to stop. You want her to continue laying. You want to have some silk brood and some different stages of brood going in. So that's, as you're going through your hive, check for those four things. If, if they're strong, if, and I had nukes last year that survived uh, the winter. I had a nucleus box right here. Uh, five frames survived the winter. I had one frame of honey in there, full frame, and I had brood, and it was a full box. It was to the point where I was thinking if it had been earlier in the year, I need to move it to a single story box. But it's this late in the year, I'm going to keep it full of bees. And they did actually better. There were some hives that I had as a single story hive that um, I thought, well, there probably should be a nuke and fit in a nuke, but I'm going to leave them in the single story. The nukes actually did better than the single stories because they were able to keep the temperature where it needed. They didn't have this whole box to try to keep warm. They had a lot smaller area to try to maintain and keep it together. They actually did a whole lot better. But you have to have, so you want to, if you have a single story hive, uh, you know, when we hit 40 degrees below zero, I have to be a beekeeper, we lost a lot of bees during that time. It was, it was the weaker hives. If I had it, it was typically this two story hive saw survived. I had single story hives survive as well, but they were really strong single story hives that were to the point where I should have probably, if it had been earlier in the year, I would have put a second box on there. So, right now, what you want to do is reduce that entrance. So, as you're going through the hives, you know, you've got still a couple weeks, but look at it here, you know, look at them now. Look at them in a couple weeks, but then start reducing them if you need to reduce them. If there's the bees, to hold and maintain that, leave them there. They're fine. Um, I've had people tell me, say, you know, I've been told I need to take the super off. There's three stories of bees. I need to reduce them down to two stories, and then they reduce them down to two stories and have them swarm. Uh, right now is not a bad time, or a, a really bad time if you're a swarm, you're not going to make it through the winter. Uh, so you have to judge what's in your hive. You know, judge how many bees and stuff that you have. If you reduce it down, uh, you know, like I said, I've left it three stories high all winter long. I left a full super on top because they had no honey down below. And I put some honey down below. You know, on the sides, but there were so many bees, I knew I couldn't reduce them, so I just left the super for them. Again, as a beekeeper, sometimes we want to take, take the honey, but it's more crucial to have the bees survive the winter. What ended up the next spring, those bees were going like gangbusters. They'd gone up and started eating the honey up in the, the super, and they were ready to split 
come late spring, during the apple blossoms and stuff, I was able to split those and have two hives. And did them wonderful. So the extra that we put on was to have resources and it was full. Yes. Okay. Because that, yep. that's my question. So the yep. hive at Candelaria. <clears throat> the first box is full of root. Uh -huh. The second box has, I don't know, five or six frames of honey, but I'm just wondering about those empty frames. Yeah. Where do I put them? So, that, so that's a good question. So, uh, so I'll repeat that so everyone can hear. She says, uh, the hive down in Candelaria has the first story is full of root. The second story has five or six frames of honey and, and resources, and then some empty frames. Where do I put them? Um, it's, it's best if, uh, and you can leave it just the way it is, put the honey in the center, the comb on the outside. It's better if it's foundation, get rid of it. If you have some comb, put it in there instead. Comb will help insulate it. Foundation doesn't do much as far as insulation and temperature wise. So if you have comb, put it in there. Use the comb. In the middle. Um, if you have, I'm sorry, what? In the middle? In, on the edges. Okay. On, on the second story. So she's got brood. In the first story, you want some, hopefully some honey on the, the outside of it. What if you have some foundation on that first story? You want to get rid of that. Yeah, if you can consolidate it down to one story with the front knee. So, so good point. That's what you should be doing. So good questions. If you have foundation down in the first story that they haven't built out on, you've got something that can come up onto the second story and start building, consolidate it. Put it all together. Make sure that it's all foundation, all, hopefully some resources in there, honey, pollen, bees. Uh, again, two frames on the outside if you can. At least one frame on, on the outside. And then um, comb and hopefully bees and resources on top. What will happen is the bees, as they continue to eat and, and survive the winter, they'll move around where the honey is at. On the first story. On the first story. And then they'll move up to the second story, where the honey is at. The honey should be above them. So, um, so it makes it easier for them to do that transition. They'll start eating that honey, and the queen, as they start eating <coughs> that honey, the queen will start laying in that, that area and stuff. So, um, the, the first story doesn't... They only have brood. They didn't uh -huh. have store any pollen or honey in that first store. It's all of them. Okay. So I'm just wondering, and they've laid, she's laid eggs. So I'm wondering when they move up to the honey, which they'll have to because they don't have anything down below, how do they keep the brood warm? So, the, the, well, that's a good question. So she asked, how do they keep the brood warm if they move up when they run out? So you, that's why you have the honey on the outside. So if, if there's just strictly brood in that, I would still put honey on the outside and put the brood up on top. So good question. Um, you know, put, put the brood on top or in the middle. You know, so so if it's all, if it fits completely full of brood, if this is 10 frames full of brood or 9 frames full of brood, if you have 9 frame hives or 8 frame hives, if it's all full of brood and you have no honey in there, you need to put some honey down there. Bees will starve to death, even though they've got honey inside the hive, if they can't get to it. And they do that. They'll, they'll absolutely starve to death if they can't get to it. If it's cold enough, so they have to be able to move it. We typically don't have that problem in New Mexico because it'll warm up to 50 degrees. In fact, we kind of have the opposite problem. This is, we, I lose bees this way once in a while, as well, especially on unusual winters, is they break the cluster. It gets warm enough, they break the cluster, and then, then they can move to where things are at and stuff. They will pull the honey. The bees are really resourceful. They know what they're doing for the most part. They, they actually survive pretty well in spite of us being first. So, um, but they'll actually move the honey. You know, If it's up on top, they'll move it down to where they need it. Uh, but they'll move up to that second store because it's warmer up there. Okay. It'll be warmer up there because heat rises, That's, and it's away more further away from that entrance and stuff where the cold air is coming in. <coughs> so, um, but if it's completely and they're not doing that, help them out. Put some honey on the sides. 
They'll pull that and use it for the brood. Put the brood right above it. Put the sealed brood. Let me rephrase that. Put the sealed brood right above it. Make sure you have some honey right on the outsides of that. The queen will go up into there during the winter time and start laying in those empty comb once that brood hatches and they'll use that honey on the outside. So, Do you have a preferred recipe for pollen patties? No, I haven't. I haven't ever made, made them. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. I have made pollen patties. Um, I, I've actually just bought a pre-made something from Daydan. I see. Um, you can go online. I know um, Joe Westbrook uh, has a great thing. You can go online and find it. Uh, it's, it's basically, um, if I remember right, organic. Uh, they typically use organic soy meal. Um, you want some protein in there. They, they do uh, powdered milk, um, some brewer's yeast, um, and I want to say that's a, and then and then obviously some sugar water his, or honey. His so, formula is a quarter cup of brewer's yeast. So quarter cup of brewer's yeast. Um, quarter cup of organic soy flour. A quarter cup of organic organic soy flour. And then a quarter cup of honey or um, or organic dark molasses, okay, or sugar water. So a quarter cup of sugar water, one to one ratio, honey or molasses. The honey you want to make sure it's from your bees, that it's not uh, just random honey. Um, that is, could, because that's some that's honey is a way that you can transfer diseases to the bees. Doesn't hurt us, but it can transfer to the bees. So if you're getting it from an unknown source. You might be risking contaminating the bees as far as some kind of a disease. Well, I was reading, you know, of course you read the bee books, and I'm a new beekeeper. Uh -huh. Is there something I should be putting in the sugar water right now, some type of like antibiotic or something like that now? No. Uh, you don't want to be putting antibiotics. There are some things uh, that you can put in there. I've got um, Be Healthy. Uh, again, I bought from Day Dan. <coughs> Uh, be healthy, a couple other things. Seem to help putting a teaspoon or tablespoon of that in the sugar water uh, before winter time. It, it did seem to help. So there's nothing really I should be adding to the to the feed. You don't you don't have to. Um, I said uh, some things. I I know I've heard uh, you know some essential oil and stuff is is good uh, to put in there. There's all kinds of things. Uh, again, bees do surprisingly well in spite of the beekeepers of what they've tried and, and done and experimented with. Do you uh, reduce the entrance any? Yes, oh. I do. Um, I use duct tape. So, okay. But I, I'll reduce the entrance down to about uh, two inches. So it helps as far as the temperature goes and stuff. But, uh, I've also done it where I haven't reduced it and they've done fine if they were a good strong time. So. There's an excluder in there. Should you take that out during the winter? Yes. Take the excluder out during yes. the winter. Uh, so if there's an excluder in there, definitely take it out. You're getting it ready. You want the bees to be able to move. The reason why you have an excluder is to keep the queen from going up and laying in where your honey is at. Right now, you're getting them ready for winter. If there's some extra honey, you determine that there's extra honey, you can go ahead and take it out and extract it. But you want to make sure that the bees have enough for the winter time. Okay. Um, but, yeah, absolutely. The other thing, uh, you said like in two weeks you kind of should let it alone, but it seems to be really warm and it might be warm into October and they might be gathering, you know, like the chamisa and the asters and stuff like that right now. Absolutely. I love it about beekeeping. There's no absolutes. Yeah. Absolutely no absolutes. That's the only absolute that there is. There's no absolutes. <laughs> so, you know, I love it when I hear my, my mentor, Ken, say, you'll get honey this year, the first year of beekeeping. That's possible. It's no absolutes. It depends on rainfall. It depends on what's going on and stuff with your bees. There's a lot of factors that go into it. So absolutely watch what's going on with your bees. Have your bees tell you what's doing. I notice, you know, at the open, you know, listen to what your bees are telling you. Uh, and this is a prime example of it, open space. I'm sitting there working the bees. I have one of these hives. It's a smaller hive. I have one of the, the top inner covers that has the, 
the hole here. So the bees are coming in. I open up, anytime I open up the lid, I have all these bees on top right here. And I'm looking at it, and then when I pop it open, there's no bees on that second story, or hardly any bees on that second story. They're all down on the first, first story. And it's like, so what's going on? These bees are a little meaner than the rest of the bees. You know, not bad, not bad at all. Not thinking about it. So what's going on here? I'm listening, to, try to listen to what your bees are telling you. It's like, you know what's going on? They're protecting their hive. They have to protect this, even though I had the entrance reduced because it was a smaller hive. They're having to protect the second story because they're having to defend that. They're a little more aggressive. And I learned that the hard way when I had uh, bees in an apple orchard. I had a big, strong hive, three-story hive. Um, just, and I was ready to split it. I was feeding it. There was no food. The apple blossoms had, had died off. Um, I was feeding them about every two days. I was driving an hour to go put sugar water on there. And I'd get stung. And I, you know, I'd go in there with no gloves on all the hives. i hit that hive and I'd get stung every time. And I'd go, oh my goodness. You know, this hive, I'm going to have to requeen this. This is a mean hive. Um, I got ready to move them. I taped up all the holes so the bees couldn't get out because when you move them, you, you want to move them at night, but you don't want bees popping out places that you don't know that bees are going to be popping out at. Surprise you. Um, so I'm taping it up. The blooms happened again. You know, another bloom came up. So I left them there for a couple weeks, and I was still feeding them. I stopped getting stung. Because they had enough food. No. It was, they were having to defend that hole from the other hives. And they were more aggressive because they were defending. Once I protected that, they didn't have to defend that anymore. They mellowed right out. So listen to what your bees are telling you. Always listen to what your bees are telling you. Try to figure out what's going on with them. So where do you put the sugar water? Yeah. Good question. Where do you put the sugar water? <laughs> I usually take some frames out. In fact, this one, this is set up perfectly as far as some sugar water. I'll have three frames missing. And I just put the sugar water on top of the, of the beads. A couple things. You can just do, set on like a, a container? You can do, I put it in a, it's a quart jar. I'll just do a quart jar. You can do the Boardman feeders. Um, I know um, TJ and actually Jason Pink builds them as well. Um, does you know a Boardman feeder entrance where the bees can go feed from that? That's actually pretty good because it's sealed. That's the only thing that the bees can get into. On the Langstroth Hive, it's a little more challenging to con consolidate that completely. Um, it sometimes entices robbing. If you've got a lot of hives, it entices robbing, uh, entices some fighting and stuff going on. To prevent that, I just take, take three frames out and put it right there on top of the bridge. Do you put something for them to get to it so they don't drown in the water? Or? No, no, it's a quart jar. Okay. I poke small little holes in it, uh -huh. turn it upside down. On the lid. <coughs> on the lid, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I know what I'm thinking. Come on, guys. I know what I'm thinking. I, okay, I'm going to have to share, you, uh, share with you. You just brought that up. Just, just to bring out this point. I know what I'm thinking. Uh, I had a lady one time who was asking me. We are emailing back and forth. Um, and she uh, um, says, I've got this bug that's coming into my hives. The bees are killing it and stuff. What kind of bug is this? And I went down to Alamogordo to do a, a bee, bee teaching class. And I'm reading the email, and she said, here's my phone number, give me a call. So I thought, well, I'll just text her. So I text her and said, send me some pictures. She texts me back and says, who is this and why do you want pictures of me? <laughs> <laughs> this goes, so I know what I'm thinking. <laughs> but you have, to, you have to kind of be in sync. <laughs> okay, so you get the jar, you turn it upside down. Poke, poke holes in the lid. Okay. You just I take a, a pin knife and just poke small holes in the lid. Okay. Turn it upside down. The uh, cohesion of the sugar water will keep it from dripping. I always turn it upside down. Uh, and you can do that uh, 
above the hive is fine. It'll drip in. The bees will clean it off. You can do it away from the hive. So it just one. slowly drips? And no. Then it'll, 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 once you turn it upside down, you watch it'll stop dripping. Okay. When you first turn it, it'll drip. Right. And then it'll stop. But then the bees will come up and start licking from that jar. Uh, and so you put it in between the slats on here. You can do the same thing in a top bar hive. If you don't have that feeder, that Boardman feeder, just put it in the back. The Boardman feeder, is it? Like the, a frame? The Boardman like feeder, fire? and I didn't bring one, I didn't think about bringing one. It's typically um, a silver or plastic um, container that the, the quart jar fits in okay. already. Right. It fits in. I like a holder then, though. It does. Yeah. And it fits right in the front of the hive. Okay. So, it yeah, fits on the outside of the hive. And the bees, bees don't have to go out to get to it. Um, but the other nice thing with it being inside the hive, you know, I'll feed the bees if they need it. I'll feed them through Thanksgiving time frame. You know, and the nice thing is, is I don't have to sit there and take everything apart. There you go, boardman feed. Ah, uh, okay. So and then you put that quart jar right there. The bees get into that entrance. And it's right here. You Thanks, throw Mark. Outside of the frame. Yep. Just, put it just like that. Sometimes they don't quite fit. You have to lift it up. You can get that from Daydare and Man Lake. They all carry them. What's it called again? <laughs> Boardman feeder. Boardman? Boardman feeder. TJ. The neat thing about the Boardman feeder is you can simply put it in the top super. Correct. You can put it up there and uh, yep. you can either use it in the front or put it in the yep. entry. Yeah. And, and what I've done, you put it up, instead of putting it in the entrance, the same thing, top bar hive or Langstra. You can put it, so you have to take out three, four frames, three frames, put it in here. The nice thing is, just put it on top of there, the bees will come in and do it. You can just do a quart jar, and you know, the same thing. Uh, you just put the quart jar in there. Uh, for the top bar hive, you need to make sure it's propped up. You need to have some kind of a stand for it, at least three-eighths inch of thick, so that they, the bees can go in and do it. Uh, the nice also thing about it, hang on, um, if you put it inside the hive, as it's getting colder, they'll help keep it warm and they can use that without going out. And it won't freeze as easy. And it won't you want to freeze. make sure it's level too, though. Yes. Simple. You want to make sure it's level so that it's not continually dripping. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a good point. Because I have seen it where, you know, you come to a hive and you're seeing all this sugar water out front and stuff, and that's not a good thing. So you want to make sure when you tip that, you're setting it on there, you're, you're watching it, making sure it's not just running out. Now, now, Craig, you kind of contradicted yourself just a moment ago. You said... That doesn't surprise me. I know, me. it doesn't surprise me either. But what you said was, uh, you know, two, three weeks from now, you don't want to get back on the hive. Right. Now, about okay, that was an 60 absolute. seconds ago, you said, <laughs> well, you get back there all the way past Thanksgiving, and you're putting sugar water, but you're having to open it up okay. again. So, and that's a good point. I'm really not con contradicting myself. Okay. I'm just popping the top off. I am not breaking the seal here. So I am not flipping this up and going through my hive. I'm just popping the top off. So I'm really not contradicting myself. But good point, because I know what I'm thinking. You know what you're thinking. I know what I'm thinking. Send me pictures, please. Yes. Be careful what you ask for, buddy. What do you think of Fondant? Fondant um, is... Actually, not bad. You know, you can do dry sugar uh, also. Dry sugar fondant is a substitute that the bees can use. The bees eat sugar. They eat honey during the winter time to survive. The pollen is for the brood. Okay? Bees, adult bees, eat very little pollen. It's the brood that needs the pollen and honey. Okay? Sugar, dry sugar, fondant is fine. You need to make sure that there's some kind of moisture or water source around because they'll need that to help process that sugar. But it's a, it's a survival technique. So um, it's kind of like if you've heard me speak, you, you've heard me say this about uh, beekeeping anyways. Um, I feed them sugar water if I need to. I'd rather not feed them sugar water. That's like having my kids grow up on junk food. They're going to survive, they're going to do all right. At a certain point, they're going to start having health problems. Sugar water is a great substitute. Sugar during the winter, fondant is fine as a thing. 
best thing is to make sure as you're going through it, they have enough honey to get through the winter. So we just bought a new feeder for the top. Uh -huh. It has an open in the, open in the middle, and then it has two trays. Um, I don't know the name of it. It has two trays, and so you could put either fonda in it, or it's uh, done with I think it's bee wax, so that it would hold fluid if right. you wanted to. So if that was on the top, and you filled it up, we'll save it sugar water. Now, it doesn't, listen, I feed the bees right now. It doesn't take very long for them to eat <coughs> a drink of, I mean, within a couple hours, 10,000 bees come or 20,000, and, and it's gone. So, I mean, you have to keep opening the lid with that to see how it's coming along, don't you? I guess it depends. For this, yes. Yes. Um, with the cork jar and the Boardman feeder in there? Yes. You, yes, you do. Okay. You have to pop the lid. You have to have kind of a... Thanks. I was just wondering about how much time I And you can still, so that's all right to do that? It is. You don't want to break all the seals. Uh, Lift the lid quickly, put the lid back down, the lid you're going quickly. to fix and do it. Yeah, and you can actually, sorry, you can actually, a lot of times if you have it just right, kind of look in here without. Um, oh, okay. I, I can that. see that, yes. You definitely want by November, by Thanksgiving, even out in these mountains, to have no more um, sugar water in You want to have it all closed up and have all the frames and everything else in there. Um, Doug, he, he brought some, he went out and got some um, frames of honey. One of the things we love to do, this is the time of year um, that you can harvest what's left, uh, that the bees aren't going to need, but by all means, I'll lead them. He went to um, some hives and grabbed a couple frames of honey. I wanted Want to be able to do that and pass it around so that um, you kind of see how heavy they are, what they're like. If you haven't experienced that, it's, it's always fun to do that. A lot of you guys probably have already experienced it. You said you refill the port jar every two days? It depends on what the bees are doing, okay? The bees are going to take the sugar water. Yes, please pass it around. The, the bees are going to take the sugar water if they need it. Right now, the bees are starting to get in panic mode because they know, because of the light going, you know, it's getting darker sooner and not as dark as soon. They know it's it's drawing near. They know it's drawing to an end. They want to fill everything with honey as much as they can. You said during the winter, 50, 50, 50 water, 50 sugar. Here, here, here yeah, shortly. Here shortly. You want to go to one to one. I stop feeding them about Thanksgiving time, if, but again, absolutes. I don't feed them if they're full already. So you want to take a look as you're going through that hive, and they if they have enough honey, you really don't need to feed them. You don't need to feed them. If they don't have enough honey, if they don't have enough honey, you absolutely want to feed them. And every few days or maybe. Check, check it, find out to see how, and you'll start getting an estimate uh, on how quick they're going through. And then you said you quit doing it around Thanksgiving? I'll quit doing it Thanksgiving. Because you right. think they have enough? Uh, well, I start getting more concerned about it being too cold and I want to leave them alone. Not open enough that hive anymore, not that time. Are there any signs you can look for the hive might be starving? Okay. Absolutely good question. Are they, and you guys have all had good questions, but what to look for as far as if the bees are starving during the winter time. Um, what you have to do, and this is good right now to do this, bring your eyes so you have a good idea of what's going into the winter. Go on the back side, lift it up. See how heavy it is. It should be pretty heavy. If you go in sometime during the winter time and you lift it up and you say, oh my gosh, that's light. You better start worrying about feeding them because they're going to starve to death. So um, I've had it where I've done that and gone in there and I've had hives that died and hives that as I went through there I found out that they would have starved to death had I not started feeding them. Craig, do you want to take one more question? Sure. Someone who hasn't asked a question. Right behind you. You said in the beginning that... Uh, 
Okay. Top, top hole, if you're going to do a, a ventilation hole, should be at least half an inch. If, if you're doing it three eighths of an inch, again, I've had these get stuck in there <laughs> and then die. Um, so at least half an inch to three quarters of an inch. And that goes on the side of the hydro? I, I just put it right into that. That's what I've done. So. Okay. Thank you, sir. You got it.